it's Jason from Bohemia Bees, and this is the second video in our two-part series on uh, managing mites within your apiary. Um, if you have bees, you have mites, and you need to have a strategy or plan in place to mitigate those mites or reduce those volume of mites in your colonies, uh, or your colonies are going to die. Uh, a lot of people have a debate back and forth in the beekeeping community about treatment, no treatment. Um, it's really up to uh, the beekeeper and what he or she thinks is important uh, in managing those mites and the, and the health of their colonies. Uh, a Varroa mite, as you see here, this is a model of one. Um, this would be the size of a Varroa mite if attached to the side of a bee. So you can see um, that small parasite uh, attaches to the fat bodies of the bee. And, it, and it's not the mite that actually kills the bees um, or puts stress on the colony. It's the diseases it brings. So those mites have their own diseases within their community that they, uh, that they do not get impacted by. But when they come into the colony uh, from the bees foraging out uh, on the flora sources in your area and from other bee colonies and bees that they come in contact with, those mites uh, will attach onto that bee, come back, you know, start to lay eggs within the actual cells of the brood and replicate sixfold in a very short period of time. Uh, that volume of bees is also uh, continu also brings that volume of, of chance for, for um, viruses and diseases to your colony that could cause that colony to collapse. We showed you on the prior video on how to test for mites and the strategy we use here on the eastern shore of Maryland to test. Uh, we are very um, staunch on testing and not just automatically treating. Now granted most hives will have mites and we've said that already. but testing before treating because you want your bees to have um, sort of a natural resistance if possible or build that natural resistance and using other techniques to help give them that edge to combat the mites that may be coming into their colony or that will be coming into their colony um, and, and keeping that volume low. So if you have a, a small amount of volume of mites then you have a, a lesser chance of having you know those diseases in your colony that could cause that colony to collapse. So what we always recommend is testing. Testing to see what your volume of mites are within your colony. Testing it on a brood frame. Testing it with uh, you know, naturally younger or middle-aged bees um, that will be working in the hive. Not as much the foragers because remember, those mites are gonna come back with the foragers and transit transmission to the, uh, the bees that are working uh, the brood inside, the younger middle-aged bees. So you wanna make sure you test from that frame that has brood on it. Uh, typically, uh, uncapped brood would be helpful if you can find that. Uh, that's when the, the mites will actually move in. Uh, when we treat today, we're going to treat with something uh, there's uh, uh, called oxalic acid. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with oxalic acid, it is a naturally occurring acid in nature. Uh, when rhubarb, the plant rhubarb, breaks down, it releases that acid. Um, however, we want to put it in a vapor form. We want to put that in a vapor form because we want that vapor to permeate the hive and, and get through, to hit, touch all the bees, land on their fur or their bodies, and that, that oxalic acid is toxic to the varroa mite. That varroa mite will die and release off and fall to the bottom. Uh, and it also, if it dies uh, or weakens, the bees that are cleaning themselves of the vapor that attaches to their, their body and their hairs, they'll groom those mites off. Again, reducing the amount of mites a lot living within the colony. You're never gonna get 100% no mites. Uh, maybe someday we will. Maybe someone will come up with a way to eradicate mites but until you have that point in time you've got to have a plan in place and and I know there's controversy around treatment no treatment I mentioned earlier we're gonna treat we feel that's strong enough that you know we have uh, enough mites in our colonies we tested the colonies behind us and one or many of these colonies have five or more mites in that test the uh, wash test that we did uh, showed that uh, if, they, if all of these colonies showed less than five mites, one or two mites or no mites, well then we may not treat. We may not treat because we allow those bees to continue that regiment of being proactive and sort of managing the mites on their own. Uh, whether they're doing it or whether you're doing it through things like integrated pest management boards, the screen bottoms, uh, other types of sugar shakes, uh, brood breaks. There's so many different techniques that you could use um, to try to give those bees the tools they need to help try to uh, eliminate mites within your colony. But like I said, we all have mites in our colonies. So we need to find a way. And oxalic acid, uh, apivar, hopguard, um, various other types of, of 
treatments that are in the marketplace out there for beekeepers are great options. Today we're going to be using oxalic acid. We just feel that that's a more natural way to do it. Our honey supers are off. This happens to be a colony with just a, another uh, medium on top, so it's not a honey super. But every one of the colonies behind me don't have honey supers on. And even though the federal government does allow you to use oxalic acid now with honey supers on, we just don't like to do it. Whatever honey's for them, they're going to keep and they're going to eat. Uh, and we're not going to put that in the hive. Um, when you're treating, you need to make sure you have the right tools to treat. Oxalic acid is a vapor. It's a chemical. It's a, it's a, it's a naturally forming uh, uh, vapor or naturally forming uh, acid that still need, requires protection. You know, we're going to use protection today with our, our mask to give us our safety goggles or for our eyes for any splash. Uh, we also have the uh, cartridges on our, our breathing apparatus here. And these are for, these are 3M, uh, and we'll put a link in the description below, but these are specifically for organic acids or vapors. Uh, it's a multi-use uh, cartridge that you can put on, but you can't just use the regular dust filters. You've got to use one that filters out the, or the, uh, the vapors and or organic acids. So be sure to look for that. Uh, we also are going to be using a pure oxalic acid today. Now, I can't disclose the name of where we got this from, naturally, because we're not promoting them in particular, but there's definitely sources online where you can get your oxalic acid. Just look for the purity level. You want at least a 99% or 99.5 or higher percent purity level uh, and so they don't have any fillers and such in there. Um, especially when you're using a vaporizer, you don't want that to burn off with any impurities in it. So the higher the, the purity level, the better. Um, so locate that. Uh, we're also going to be using a tool from a company called Larabi's. And Larabi's makes a, a suite of really nice oxa oxalic acid vaporizers. This happens to be the one that's the 120 volt, uh, 380 watt um, tool that they use. This is called the Macro. Um, it's a very well designed, hefty duty product. Um, it has a great design to it, a great feel when it holds. Um, gives you the, the delivery port in the front that can go in the front of the hive or if you drill holes in the back of the hive, uh, however you choose to do it. Has a mechanism in the back or a screen in the back to tell you the temperature and we'll talk about that once we're treating um, but this is this is one that you can use uh, that will require a, a power source so you'll have to be close enough to a power source or a generator with a cord to be able to plug this in and heat it up um, it comes with in there or the caps these are the caps that will be filled with the oxalic acid and put it placed in the top for them to actually vaporize um, we also have gloves we're gonna wear gloves as well uh, those are some of the tools that you need. Um, I will say that Larabi's does have an instant vap that's portable, that uses a battery. We're gonna, we sell that on our website. If you go out to uh, bohemiabees.com and you look at our website, uh, we do offer both of these models. This model has to be bought direct from Larabi's. We don't currently stock it, but we are stocking the instant vap now. It's a popular new model that doesn't require any cord or, or, or electricity uh, to power it. Um, that's really the tools and why we treat. Uh, let's really get into the process of treating so you understand what you need to do in your apiary and don't have anxiety around treating because a lot of times people won't treat because of that anxiety about using these types of tools that you're not familiar with. So stay tuned and we're gonna show you how we treat our hives behind you and how quickly we can move through them and what we need to do. Okay, so the Larabi's 120-volt uh, macro uh, that we're using, again, it's a power source you have to have. We're plugging it in. It's already preset. Um, it's preset to heat to 400 degrees or 430 degrees. You see a 428, 425 uh, on the display. That'll tell you when it's ready to actually be used, once it reaches the 400-degree mark. Now, the powder form of the oxalic will be put in these small caps. These are silicon caps. Uh, so they won't melt. Uh, we're going to use a half a teaspoon, and that is sufficient for one gram of oxalic acid per hive body, right? So we don't want to overwhelm our bees. We don't want them to abscond. abscond. We don't want to do too much um, in these colonies. Uh, so we're going to use just that half a teaspoon in this treatment. As far as a regimented treatment, you want to make sure that you're treating every seven days. So a pattern of at least four to five treatments in a row every seven to 10 days will give you enough hit on that colony to destroy any mites that will be in any of the brood cycles because you'll be reaching only the uncapped brood. Any capped brood, this won't permeate the capped brood. The oxalic acid vapor will not go through that capped brood. So if there's any capped brood in here, 
it's not going to permeate it. So you want to make sure you have that cycle to kill over the next three to four weeks your uh, any brood that could emerge and be laid again or any mites that could be crawling around before they go into that cap brood state. Let's go ahead and fill our silicon cap. We're going to set this to the side. We're using our oxalic acid. I have a glove on because I'm touching the oxalic acid. Now, now when you fill it, you want to get a, a teaspoon, but you don't want to compact it inside the silicon cap. You take that heaping teaspoon, you put it in, and you just take your spoon and you push it down. So that right there is what you want. That's a half, a, if this is compacted, it would be a half a cap. So that's sufficient for what we want to do. If we want to double the dose and it's in spring, we might actually do a full cap, but that's sufficient for what you need. That's approximately one gram of oxalic acid powder. Now we're going to fill the rest of our caps. And we're going to show you how we treat a hive. So we're going to set that to the side and put on our protective gear. And we're going to talk a little loud so you can hear us. Um, we're going to go ahead and take the cap, we place it in the front, we look at our temperature, make sure it's over 400 degrees, and then we're going to take, put our gloves on. Now remember that cap is going to, this, this bowl is going to be hot. 400 degrees hot because it has to sublimate the powder into a vapor form. So you want to be very careful when you use that not to touch that bowl in the front. It gives you a place to hold it back here in the back and you're going to take that and you're going to place it on top of the cap and you're going to press down using your leather glove. Once you have it in there and it's good and tight, you want to give it make sure it's good and tight in there because you don't want it to pop out when the pressure pushes through. You're going to come around to the front of your hive, or in case you have a hole that you've drilled, and you're going to place the actual vaporizer inside the hive. And then you're going to turn it over. And you're going to sublimate. It's shooting the oxalic acid into the hive as we speak. Give it a little tap. You can see if we pull it out, see it. Now what I'm watching for is my temperature to get back to 400 degrees. What that tells me is that the, the oil of, has been sublimated to 350 degrees. It's probably about 5 to 10 seconds as the oxalic acid sublimates. You can hear the bees buzzing inside. When it starts to flow out like that, you know you're filling the whole cavity up. I'm at 415. 420. I always give it one more little quick tap, and that's it. That's really it. We know that we've gotten the majority of that cap empty, and the bees are now have that treatment inside the colony. Let's go ahead and continue to treat the rest of the hives, and then we'll wrap up at the end. Okay, so we've completed our treatments on these colonies. Uh, we have another uh, cart like this, and we have two other yards we have to go through. But uh, it took us about approximately, you know, a couple minutes, a minute or two maybe per hive. Uh, that's just making sure that we've got everything set up and prepped. 
loaded and by the time the temperature drops below um, 400 and then reaches back to 400 again that cycle is what allows us to have the uh, the amount of oxalic acid that we put in that uh, the uh, cap to emulsify into a vapor and flood the whole cavity of the hive um, again this is a, a treatment that you're going to want to repeat weekly uh, every seven to ten days typically late summer early fall uh, when the brood starts to get uh, uh, smaller and smaller the nest starts to get smaller and the volume of bees are, are still in the colony uh, you want to make sure you do that uh, and then once you've done this for over a series of two or three weeks uh, maybe halfway through test again test to make sure that your mite loads still are going somewhere that they're actually going down if they're not then maybe you need to try something else maybe you need to try um, like apivar mm. or hop guard or some other type of treatment that could be uh, more, more uh, uh, impactful on your colony uh, don't be afraid to try different things or combinations um, sometimes some of our colonies will put a strip of apivar in for about a week or two and then we'll start our program of cycling through all the oxalic uh, periods of every seven to ten days for four to five periods this gives a really good hard knockdown on those mites so that when they go through winter the stresses of the mites are not there the bees will then survive through the, the winter and come out strong in the spring really it's just an overall strategy it's really the good stewardship of bees uh, to treat uh, so whether you choose to treat or not to treat we're not going to debate that but we're going to at least encourage you to look at all the the practices that are out there to help you mitigate those mites and the volume of mites within your colony because again if you have beehives you have mites and you better have a plan or your mites may be uh, creating a mite bomb for your neighbor uh, that may have beehives within a three to five mile radius of you when the bees are out foraging so you want to be a good steward of your apiary so that you're not impacting someone else's apiary uh, with that i'd like to wrap up the video again this is part two uh, we have a link in the description below or within the um, the cards in the top corner here uh, we'll also make sure that we put it within a um, a group uh, so you can actually see that series of what to do to test and then how to treat we use the oxalic acid this time I'll also find a video on there that where we show when we're putting apivar in so you can see that method of treatment as well uh, i hope you've learned something uh, if not um, i appreciate you watching appreciate you staying at the end of the video uh, hit that subscribe button so that we can continue to grow our audience uh, and share our experiences here on the eastern shore of maryland at bohemia apiary because here at bohemia apiary beekeeping for us is definitely more than a hobby it's an obsession thanks for watching